The more information that appears online means that that's more information that will be disseminated offline through like just through people's networks and just in, in the country at large. So it's really just proliferating information in general is going to benefit everybody. A large number of new e-government initiatives and data clearing houses and, and new policies around transparency, um, especially around budget and spending data in addition to, to raw data feeds, all happening at the state level. And at the local level, there's enormous variety. It just completely depends on the, on the locality. Uh, we, we rarely work directly with local organizations, but we, we, like, we support and, and communicate with and try to offer as much advice as we can to both like pe citizen driven organizations like there's an open government New York City group that tries to work with the the New York City administration to release more data and they've had a, lo a large degree of success there um, and there's been some activity in San Francisco as well to produce these data sets these data clearing houses um, but uh, the, that's something that is really happening as part of the sort of culture change at like st that starts at the federal level and spreads down to the state level and the enthusiasm spreads down to the local level um, but at that sunlight, we keep our, our efforts primarily, our direct efforts primarily at the federal level. I guess on my end, since I focus a great deal on publishing, uh, getting data out and making sure it's in a good format, um, one of the most obvious and immediate challenges is trying to convince government organizations and agencies that PDF is not sufficient all the time. So for like for some for some forms of data, you know, PDF may be sufficient as as far as maybe just documents go, but really anything that is a data set need, it needs to go further, but, but a lot of people just don't under, understand that, and so trying to increase um, technical literacy to just the point that it has to be for people to understand why releasing something in XML is superior to PDF, that would be just one example of a challenge that we run into all the time. Mm -hmm. Identifying and enacting the sort of institutional changes that support the, the more open society that we're starting to see, the, the sort of changes that recognize the role of the citizen developer or recognize the role of a non-traditional watchdog or media analyst or blogger. Um, in all the ways that society is changing really quickly right now, th there are policies that go along with it that have to enable that change to happen and to support it and to make sure that, that these changes are good for everyone. So there's a lot of different a lot of different pieces defining what has to change. Yeah. Um, well, I, I started at uh, the Sunlight Foundation in, uh, I guess it would be 2006, the end of 2006. I was... Um, politically active and after the 2006 midterms I started thinking about how political activism um, around elections could translate into being relevant to, relevant to government. So I was writing online about access to information about Congress um, and that got noticed and I got introduced to Sunlight and within the next six months moved to Washington DC and since then I've been working with Sunlight uh, as the policy director. Um, figuring out what government should be doing differently with this information. So um, if I didn't have this job, I would probably be doing the same work. So it's a pleasure <laughs> to be there. <laughs> yeah, there was no professional relationship. I had recently finished a degree in philosophy and was, uh, was researching on my own to try to help a community of people uh, online on a blog figure out what they could watch in the, how they could connect to Congress. So I was researching what is knowable about Congress on the internet. And that led, that led me to Sunlight. I joined Sunlight in uh, March of this year, actually. Um, and I really only became so civically interested in the last year, year or two. Um, and uh, I've, I've been a coder for a while, for, for several years, but uh, I was really getting very dissatisfied with just working on a bunch of different corporate websites, you know, for one half-baked idea or another. And uh, I really just wanted to try to find a way to combine my technical skill with something that was making a positive difference. And 
So I, I sort of was, uh, you know, my energy level went very high during the Obama campaign in general, and that along with it promised a great deal of tr emphasis on transparency, and so Sunlight seemed like a really good fit uh, coming into it, and I'm, I'm very happy to be able to participate in what is a very uh, like unique year in American politics, especially as far as transparency goes. Uh, like the opportunities are, are never as high as they have been uh, this year, and being able to, to work on the technical side of things is, is, is great. Thank you.